What's up everybody, I'm Alex at generalguybill.com. Today we got a very special video for you. A while ago I had DJ Chrono on my podcast. If you haven't seen it already, you might want to check it out. DJ Chrono built his own version of the legendary Roland JP8080 within the reactor platform. It's called Crow8080. We talked a little bit about it in the podcast and we decided we want to make a dedicated episode just showing that plugin and go through it and yeah just see what's up with that so here it is i met with chrono via zoom and we went through that plugin we're gonna talk in detail about that synthesizer he's gonna show a lot of sounds and also tell us a lot of things what's going on under the hood of that plugin so this is it we getting right into it enjoy that one So do you want to talk a little bit about that synth, like a little bit about the overview before we get into the sounds? So, you know, because at the end, you know, you want to present that um, synth, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I advise um, just to do what you think is best, but maybe it's uh, cool just to do a, a quick round before we start and to make okay, sure. Sure, things, sure, uh, it's your show. Go ahead. Out. So there, I'm just gonna go quickly through a couple of sounds and just also let me know what you think uh, and how it sounds over there. Okay. Nice one. All right. You remember that one, don't you? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's uh, from um, yeah, the hustle from some some guy. I like the track. <laughs> Serious anger fist lead, right? <laughs> well, this is still the the less uh, one. So. Well, I could uh, use some with uh, a mento. It could work like that. Uh. And this one. <laughs> and this with uh, the the pitch band from the um, Nord Modular. Mm. This is really. Uh, yeah, you have really nice bend. Where do you, you know? where do you um, uh, adjust the pitch bend range in the synth? Um, at the here okay. pitch bend mm -hmm. at the bottom. <laughs> Only I might change the the values because it is like going from C zero. Yeah, it would be better if it would some be just find it. plus twelve, minus twelve, or something, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I should change that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. <laughs> Definitely. Not too much voices. <laughs> yeah. You can hear, hear 
Rudy here, this is nice low. Low notes are really nice. Something like that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can really tune, uh, tune the resonance into the the post equalizer which I added. So and this, uh, the, makes you you got like the effects and then you got like an EQ which is pre and then the other is post, right? Yeah, yeah. and I, I named it pre equalizer, post equalizer. And what about the effects? You, Where they are are they in the chain? Um, well, you can see like um, mm, um, this level. Mm -hmm. This is all in white, so this is the, the polyphonic schematics until this part, the level. From there on, it goes on to the mono filter, mm -hmm. and then it goes on to FX1 and FX2. Yeah. And then you can go here, and you can set FX1 and 2 to parallel if you want, yeah. and, and change the the gains and the outputs to get a new kind of sound. And with a lot of distortion, you know, it is better to have a post equalizer. Yes. So I can still, you know, make a clean, uh, clean, good sound. Yeah. So it really improves the presets as well. So just, just to understand the pre equalizer is before the effects. Yeah. And before the mono. Of the um, before. Okay. Yeah, well, no, I think, I think after, well, I can, I can show you. One, mm -hmm. um, because it's yeah, uh, that's that's a very important detail. Yeah, it takes some time. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! When I see that, no, <laughs> <laughs> take it away. So the polyphonic <laughs> polyphonic area is here, and here comes the fixed area, which is here. And from here is the four bond EQ. Pre EQ goes into the mono filter. Do a tone pre, another one, something. Then multiplex one, two, mm. and then delay. Then another tone function. I think it's pre or post for some, some function. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, a character. Uh, Sure, I've just put some stuff in there to make sure it sounds uh, the same. Oh, this is a new uh, thing. I've I tried to um, emulate uh, the character, as you can find it here. Yeah. Was that just like a saturation? No, no, it's it's like a, an analog bass boost. Okay, I see. Yeah. So and from there on, you have yeah, the, you're going to the output. So it's not that. Uh, what was the oh. DC thing at the end? You got like a DC filter built in already? Yeah, um, yeah, the DC filter makes sure um, when uh, some sound gets an offset, it's it's gonna be balanced back to the yeah. center. So it's already built in. Yeah, cool. It's built. Cool, in. cool. <clears throat> so in in some way, it's it's not the best way to test, but uh, because when I um, monitor the output, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm. But in this case, it just it finishes off the synth. Yeah, you know, of it course. makes sure it's, it's it sounds good and doesn't give uh, weird artifacts. And stuff yeah, of like course. That. Like you don't want to have like no control about like the symmetry and stuff like that. So it's it's good to know that there is a DC filter already built in. Yeah, exactly. I really like this one. This uh, arachnid it makes me mm. think of uh, spiders somehow. Yeah. <laughs> like a horror movie thing right right yeah. right and also this one is really cool It's kind of talking to you. Mm. 
And um, well, this one I just adjusted a bit. Sounds really Probably nice. know this kind of sound. Mm-hmm. Classic. It's a fun for him. Nice uh, snare. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some serious yeah. riser. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of, um, yeah, you can only do this with um, uh, the control one uh, on feedback OSC. Mm -hmm. It's set to zero, and then you go to the matrix and you set in, um, like it's matrix one, uh, mod envelope, and it's going to the left. So it's actually going out of boundary. Mm -hmm. And um, because the mod envelope, there's a really long decay. And that's the path it takes, and, and then you get this uh, really weird riser yeah. because there's some kind of feedback uh, chain in the oscillator. Really Something cool. like that. And I hope this one is working because I had some problem with uh, the it, it kind of changed, but. Well, the rumble is there. <laughs> Sometimes it's a bit too noisy. Yeah. But as you can hear, there's sometimes coming on inconsistencies as, uh, as with thunder. It, it was better in a different version, but yeah, I can still make it wet. <laughs> Rain, wind. <laughs> yeah, and this is some kind of random, yeah. um, which is smoothed. And there's some, um, yeah, here, this is some modulation section in the matrix. You can put a smoother in there and you use the LFO one which is set on random so it smooths out this stepping yeah. so yeah it's interesting I think I made, th made this one with uh, Ricardo from Kale Castility mm -hmm. but that was fun to put this one in there and this one is uh, a remake of the first preset of the Uno 106. Yeah. <laughs> Some serious nice. 80s. just need to find the right melody and you think oh that's the the sound you know what mm -hmm. i mean a bit higher even higher and it, it sounds the same as the hardware We need uh, the the pitch band. Put it to C one, uh, C minus one. C. Yeah. yeah, that's fucked. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's doable.
something like that. Mm. And if you do it a bit faster, you know, I can make this really, uh, yeah, old school sounds. Yeah. <laughs> and and this one is requested by uh, the destroyer. He wanted uh, a reset function in the Alpha Uno sound. I'm not sure if you know what it means. So you got a starting point for that sound, or what do you mean? Yeah, and this is also based on a chorus effect, you know, mm -hmm. which normally does not have a reset. I see. So on the um, FX3 page, you have a reset button. Yeah. And you can change the face, face as well. Oh, you mean you mean it's kind of an oscillator reset, like a retrigger. So every note sounds exactly yeah. the same. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. that shit is important. Every synth need to have that option. But ma mainly, it's not on effects. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, and also, if you use the sweep function on the uh, on this sound, it's gonna destroy the whole uh, face as well. I'm not sure if it's working at the moment. Just shoot. But... Well, doesn't matter too much. <laughs> and, and then uh, the new function is uh, there is no FM in the Alpha mm -hmm. Alpha Uno. That should sound like that. Especially in the lower range, it sounds really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Instant pleasure <laughs> with this sound. And uh, something like this one. <laughs> I really think it's, it's like some synth scream, you know, yeah. like a really big monster. <laughs> well, it's not that cool. And this one was a rhythm where you can just press one note. You don't have to do anything anymore. Yeah. So, uh, and then the last one I picked was um, one for the control pedal. If it's uh, below my desk, yeah. You mean, you mean the sustain pedal or? No, control. Okay. Like that. Yeah, man, that, that one sounds really nice. And uh, I call this one the expression strings because when you just play it normally, it's it's just really soft. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a pedal, well, there are different ways to do it in that case. But yeah, you just plug it in your synthesizer on the back side or your controller yes. keyboard, and it says next to. Uh, sustain it says control pedal i see so i guess i guess not every uh, synth has it yeah well um we went right into with like sounds and already like the nerdy shit how about if we you know load up like an init sound and go through the individual functions you know maybe you can make like some simple lead and utilize a little bit of the functions just to show like what this synth can and what mm -hmm. is like so special about it yeah, exactly. Um, uh, well, the first thing is um, um, when you start off, it might be a lot to to swallow, you know. 
but uh, the the parts are the same as as the hardware. So mm -hmm. it, if you know the hardware, you probably can find your way out here. Um, and the uh, the interesting thing always is the super saw. Of course, it's always <laughs> for me <laughs> thing of interest. It's like a, a bee swarm. What are those knobs um, on top of the pitch envelope? Like there's one, two, and what is it? M E. Pitch envelope. Yes. Here? There's like above it. There are two numbers. One, two, and M E. Not, not, no, no. I mean the pitch envelope. Hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So um, the first one is uh, it blocks the the sustain and the release. Mm -hmm. Um, because the hardware does not have sustain and release right. on the mod envelope. Uh, so you can just turn it on here and we have a mod envelope, but we're still rewriting it to make sure, you know, uh, so here you can like really draw your own type of envelope. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty dope. You can draw anything synchronized or is, is yeah. there also a loop function for that? The loop is in between these parts here. Like if we um, use this one. Nice. But yeah, we are still reworking mm -hmm. this part because it's... Um, yeah, and there's a copyright on the the one who made it, uh, and they they have uh, the copyright states you can use it uh, within the user library. I see, but not outside. Yes. So we have to rewrite it. Yeah, oh. and uh, Bradley is on it, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of relying on him uh, on that part. Yeah. So, so um, and uh, then there's another way uh, f a function here is uh, with a lot of yeah different stuff. I'm not sure if this one is working though. You can mix with uh, the original envelope. That's pretty cool for screeches. <laughs> Something like that. Well, yeah, you can you can do cool uh, cool things with screeches uh, this way. Yeah. I might have uh, some presets somewhere, but uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not too sure. You know, you can you can do it mostly by just playing and yeah. doing the pitch bend, uh, the pitch wheel. Yeah. Um. Let's let's look a little bit more like you know start from the ground up. So we got like the oscillators one and two. Um. <clears throat> yeah, we got two oscillators and starts with the saw. It starts with another saw, um, but they're different. They're not the same. Yeah. As you can hear. So this has a, a bass saw, yeah. so to speak. And um, yeah, I got the algorithm the same as the hardware, so I just leave it like that. So yeah, and this way uh, it really gives already cool sounds. But yeah, of course, uh, you have to know where to start, right? Yeah. And what what are the other functions? Like you got the triangle modulation, noise, and feedback oscillator. What what what's up with that? Yeah, the the triangle mod is is some kind of triangle but different. So you expect this to be a triangle, right? can actually uh, put up a uh, superficial for you. Uh, it's one of my favorite analyzers at the moment. 
since QBase 11. I can choose whatever you want and change it in any way you want. Uh, we need, uh, what is it? I think this one. Oh no, not this one. <laughs> Where is it? Um, oh, oscilloscope. Come on. I normally have, yeah, here it is. Oscilloscope. So here we can um, resize this whole thing as well. Configure it. Uh, right. So here we can see a bit uh, of the waveform. Mm -hmm. Then when we turn... It's, it's really moving a lot. I'm not sure why, but... But that's just kind of how it behaves, I guess. Yeah. And it's how the saw looks. As you can see, it bends both ways. Right. It pretty much sounds the same though. So the initializing setting is somewhere in between. And from that point, you can use the OS balance. But if you want to use the reset, which are enabled, you uh, just have to turn sweep down. Or you can disable it and it goes into the standard reactor phase style. Yeah. In theory, uh, it probably now will jump all the way around, like do, 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 do. Uh, and with the reset functions and sweep, I made a, a phase driver with a, a slow LFO mm -hmm. to mimic the same uh, sound as the hardware. Pretty cool. So normally, a reactor is a bit uh, less stable. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> right. Uh, and uh, from there on, uh, what I do a lot is um, I use uh, like Super Shaw. Uh, and a little bit of delay. You have uh, alternate settings here. Mm -hmm. Ping pong. And with the hardware, you have this treble bass. I'll give a little bit of that. That's this already the standard way of, no. of how the 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 eighty eighty sounds as well. Yeah, the de delay makes a big difference, right? Yeah, uh, it makes it like instantly much bigger and um, gives it also some depth and stuff. So it's it's a really big difference with and without it. Definitely. Um, and this one is is not like a, a mix. You will add um, the level into the mix instead of mixing. Mm. So it is kind of, you know, um, a scent. Yeah, yeah delay. like a parallel. So if you As go you to 100%, me. it's like 50 50. 50 dry, 50 wet. Mm, it's more. It's more? Yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. But if you had a mix, it would be only delay, so that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna do a really long feedback. And so I made um, a function in there, so it doesn't phase. can uh, really choose yourself um, how you would uh, want it of course but uh, you can make it like sound like an old tape or something some people find it ugly <laughs> 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 
But it's kind of also based on the Korg STD. And that's uh, the Korg Digital Delay, mm -hmm. which I copied the uh, information from my emulation I made. And kind of made it more like an 8080 delay. Yeah. Pretty cool. And then you have the second super saw here. And you mix together. Something like that. And I like to use the, the drift function a bit. You don't always hear it, but it's um, like um, an analog emulation. Yeah. So um, when I press uh, multiple voices, they, the next voice will detune slightly. That's the drift function. And then the unison. Well, you know unison, of course. And then we have a cool sound I have here. The, it's change called. It's called change. And what this does is uh, it changes control one of oscillator one and two at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think this is, this is can... very important that you have like one control for both oscillators. Yeah, it, it, I just had space left and I thought there must be some function. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> this is very important because, you know, you set up the balance, but then maybe overall you want more detune or less or something. I think this is pretty important because it's nothing worse than if you have like to adjust like on every oscillator the same thing to keep the balance you know so it's it's pretty cool yeah exactly and you can hear how wide it becomes and if you go more then it sounds uh, wrong mm. so so I, I did not go further and you can go further than this in theory but it flips over the sound and it's really weird in the stereo image. Yeah. Well, yeah. And from here on, uh, what I mainly do for, for clean stuff, you know, you just equalize it a bit. And then you shift it a bit into the air, you know, mm -hmm. nice airy uh, sound. like that <laughs> but uh, there for this one you need a bit more uh, powerful chord sounds you know like uh... I think maybe when you layer this more I need the right layer, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it depends on the setting. Like if this one is uh, like on three, and we have this one um, the same. So we still have three notes or four to play. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Like that, you know? Is there is there a limit on how many voices you got? Yeah, definitely. So you really have to be uh, careful on how much unison voices you uh, you set. What, what what is the limit? It's ten. Ten voices. So if yeah. I got uh, unison on two, I can only play five notes at the same time. Yeah, in theory. Yeah. But somehow in uh, with reactor, it still plays more notes. So yeah. Put it on two. And press third one. Somehow it still does have a voice left. So. Yeah. <laughs> but if you put it on three, you can. So if you put the unison on three. Yeah, and then you can hear obvious yeah. voice stealing. So um, I recommend just with melodies like this, set it on two. Yeah. Yeah, it also doesn't seem necessary. I mean, you know, you got a super saw and everything. It doesn't seem necessary that you need to go higher than two voices for the unison. Um, no, and it, it doesn't sound nice as well. Yeah. For 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 short sounds, you you don't want that. Yeah. It sounds way better uh, when you uh, do this on monophonic kind of sounds. Yes. What is this little yeah. drop down menu at oscillator one and two? There's like a triangle and then drop down menu and then wave oscillator yeah, yeah, and this uh, cool feature slider. Uh, I'll show you. So you can click uh, here or here and you can see the wave was going on. Mm -hmm. But you can also click here and you see this is actually the same. So then when you click this, you can see a drop down with all kinds of new oscillators. Mm -hmm. So um, I made a, a, a groover. Sometimes so when you hear this clicking, you just adjust the attack a yeah. bit. Uh, in some cases, yeah, it can happen, but it, on most of the sounds, it doesn't. So it, it's also depending on if you do it the right way. That's uh, FM of XMOD is kind of the same yeah. cross modulation. Uh, in this case, the um, the modulation source is a super saw, so it sounds really, you know, grumbly. But who knows? Some people might like yeah. it. You know what I mean? What is that slider? This alter above the yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I put on super saw. It, it changes. It gives you influence over um, how crazy the detune yeah. is. You can actually make a kind of a chord sound if you want as well. If you tune it uh, in some way, you can make an octave. But uh, it is mixing with a uh, with a source of the the super saw. Like not all uh, saws are going to pitch. Yes. You know, I think it's it's just one one oscillator saying below and changing the the other six. Yeah. So yeah, I, I thought it was nice to have some kind of hack feature. Yeah, you know? that's pretty cool. 
Um, okay, LFOs so. are pretty obvious. Uh, how fast are they going? Yeah, this is also a good one. So I go to initialize for this again. Mm -hmm. And also mentioning what the cool thing is about um, if you do not do a really fast LFO. And that's when you go into more extremes. So as you can hear, it, it's kind of etching off somewhere and giving some really dark kind of weird noises. Mm -hmm. So, um, and why it's doing that, it's, I'm not sure why, but the 8080 did it, so okay. I thought to replicate it. And uh, in fact, it's, it's um, uh, an, uh, an LFO at a lower audio rate, yeah, something like that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of different, it's, it's funny. I don't hear it often on synths though. But if you now uh, press the hive function, it changes the, the whole range. Yeah, it goes it's pretty goes, fast. <laughs> goes pretty high uh, in, in the frequency range. So yeah, that's going to be cool. Yeah, if if you like stuff like that, yeah. you know, why not? <laughs> I, I know some tracks from Unexist back in the day who did some stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe that's why you know it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure which one uh, with the outer power or something. I, I don't know. I forgot the, the song name. Yeah, he always had oh, a lot cool. of um crazy weird sounds. Yeah, exactly. I really like that stuff. Uh, okay, so the LFOs go really quickly. Um, they have. Uh, I have to solve this. They're jumping around a bit. Mm. I can I can fix that. Uh, anyway, um, you can uh, sync the LFOs, and reset them, change the phase, and also the width, mostly for the pulse width. Yes. And. Um, uh, there's a fade function. So it's kind of a most fading in that uh, LFO. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fading into the LFO. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, exactly. It's really common on uh, older Roland yeah. synths as well. And uh, I think a lot of um, you know keyboard players use this function to give a bit more movement, but not at the moment when you strike the key, yes. but when you hold it. Uh, you know, so. That's, it's pretty cool. <clears throat> so then we got yeah. filter envelope. There's a self-explanatory amp envelope. Not much to say. Uh, let's talk about the filters. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll save up the, the highest frequency. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the filters are um, in classic modes. I try to get them in the, as similar as the hardware. Mm -hmm. um, it's really quirky. It's not really um, not really clean or anything, you know. It, it, it's a really, uh, yeah, sharp yeah. and direct sound. Something like that. Um, and yeah, uh, you can choose between the bound pass or high pass. Same as in the, in the hardware. And um, there are some differences, but I'll get to that later. You can uh, choose the, um, the out amount of decibel, 24 dB mm -hmm. or 12. And the key follow. Yeah. 
Yeah, enough velocity. And I don't think the velocity is not in the hardware. It does have this LFO. It goes pretty deep. So, also in the high frequency. <laughs> yeah. Be, Getting those artifacts. Fun. Yes, yes, this is a artifact, yeah. Uh, and that is pretty much how this filter is. And then um, I added like a distortion chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, with like oh, 20 kind of effects. So I can, uh, and the first one is uh, a post distortion. Pretty simple, but. Mm -hmm. with a bit of delay. Well, a bit adjusted. Nice ping pong. And with the mod wheel, you can do the um, LFO2 um, vibrato. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And you also have this this drive function. And you can uh, use the matrix if you want to um, to control this as well. Yeah. Like a multi envelope to the well, what was it called? Uh, drive. I think drive one somewhere. Here's drive one. So like the pitch envelope is also the mod envelope at the same time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about the other cool features. I see a sequencer there. Yeah. And you just program the steps or how does it work? Okay. Phonic mode and also an arpeggiator built in. Yeah, but maybe it's not the right sound, but uh. Uh, I have like um, a specific preset, um, which is on a different BPM. Mm -hmm. Let's say, um, where is it? Uh, yeah. Oh, when that happens, I just have to <laughs> turn it off and on again. It's a bit too slow anyway. Well, maybe it's gonna go a bit faster, but. Something like that. Really cool. Right. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, I mean, we went through the interface. You can also change the look of the interface, I've, I've seen. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> also a nice little feature. Yeah, just when you like the 80s stuff, yes. this one is very cool. Right. <laughs> Sounds also automatically <laughs> more 80s. <laughs> At least you want to believe yeah, exactly. it. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if you uh, really want that 80 feeling, uh, you just press this one yeah. and you go to, um, in this case, the, where is it? Yeah. This one. Yeah, like that. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, there's also some more stuff um, I made. Like a, like a dreamscape. So you can get the sound, put in your own mood or whatever you like yeah. most. Yeah. Cool. And how many how uh, many sounds are there now overall? Like when you buy it now, I mean, you. I know you're constantly adding sounds, but like, how many are there in total? Well, at the moment, I have. I'm working on a third bank, and it's 128 per bank. Yeah. Uh, but I'm gonna still filter out some sounds yeah. and add new well, ones. Then and change roughly things. like 400 to 500, because there's also this chaotic hostility bank, right? And yeah, there will be um a, a lot more presets eventually when it yeah. is final. But uh, we're trying uh, to get as much as possible and before the right now. Release. That's that's uh, still the beta. Um, what do you expect? Yeah. Like when is the final version, the official one, out? We're hoping uh, in January next year, but maybe that's a bit too uh, yeah, soon. Could, could take a little bit longer, but beginning of two twenty twenty one is realistic. Yeah, that's that's realistic, and yeah. people can still okay. buy it from you. The beta still with direct contact yeah yeah at the moment yeah for the moment yeah so for everybody who wants it already now <laughs> hit up chrono and get yourself a copy yeah and and uh, but about that we are going to uh, change the policies um uh, pretty soon maybe sooner or later when um yeah some deals uh, are made and we're working on that at the moment mm -hmm. so um uh, I cannot say too much about it because I'm not sure what's really going to happen and when, of course. But yeah, it, it looks good for now. So yeah. uh, I think um, um, this is really going to yeah get a step step further than I expected. Yeah. So there is a chance that this particular version will be quite different in in a while. Yeah, there could be um, graphical changes. Uh, there will be some uh, things what I mentioned, like we don't want to have copyright infringement, yes. so we're gonna make sure we change everything. Uh, our, all I ideas, like the, the step envelope, we, we have to change this. This will be changed. So if you're relying on this now, that's uh, probably not gonna work anymore in the 1.0. And um, for people who buy it now, when those big changes happen, and if they happen, are they fucked or do they get like an upgrade? Um, well, that's a good thing. Everyone um, will go into the official version. Okay. So um, that's uh, that's really cool. So you're not losing out on anything if you buy it now. No. Okay, that's that's a fair thing. Anything else we need to know about that synth for now? Because I mean, we wanted to make that uh, overview very brief, but probably it's already like an hour long. So I'm not sure how many people watched at this point, but. Um, yeah, anything else like that we need to know about that synth for now? Um, well, there there are a lot of uh, extra functions and things. Um, like um, I'm still uh, changing uh, stuff. So yeah, but mainly everything is as it is intended. So mm -hmm. I don't think too much is going to be changed for now. Yeah. But I'm working on some uh, different shapers again uh, to make sure it gives a little bit more similarity to the virus. Yes. It already gives the same kind of stuff, but I've been forwarding and backwarding with sounds, and I, I still figured that my own algorithm sounded better on some presets. Mm -hmm. So um, it could have to do with uh, many different variables, yeah. of course. But uh, it will will be cool. There's a choice, but um, 
also be aware the more you want you know the more cpu you can get right. you know what i mean yes. so uh but uh, yeah and then again um as i've mentioned in the last video um make sure you try to duplicate the sins um and i also came across um a problem uh, lately um you need to have um um uh, the, the proper power schematics for your windows otherwise you can have uh, dropouts audio dropouts mm -hmm. so um in cubase this is uh, called the um, uh, let's see uh, uh, let's see the dropout mm. yeah uh, activate steinberg audio power scheme if you do not act activate it, um, somehow the, the plugins will use more CPU. I see. Or the, the ensemble. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I think it has to do with reactor or yeah. something. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's very good but, to know. And I think maybe with a different uh, DAW, you might also uh, have a, a certain power schematic. No. Um, you can change or choose, but do, please do not just change it because uh, a lot of problems can occur. Yeah. Like... Um, I had one time that my uh, processors went 100% all the time. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> when you do the wrong setting, that happens. So, yeah. yeah, so better look it up before you trying to mess with it. Yeah, yeah. And I also think what's important that um, you, you probably need a pretty decent processor, maybe uh, one which is uh, four or five years old is already yeah. good. I have like two PCs, so I can run them. Uh, on, on both PCs, but yeah. um, my six core is a bit more faster, but it, it doesn't change too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cool. So um, just be up to date. Cool, cool. <laughs> so yeah, cool. Thank you so much for showing a little bit in detail, also clearing up a lot of things, going through the interface. Um, still believe it's a very great synthesizer, which is definitely deserving his spot in every toolbox of every producer so thank you very much for making it and also taking the time to showing it here oh you're welcome cool <laughs> i'd love to uh, show this to everyone yeah absolutely cool. i mean you know we're gonna definitely stay in touch and um you know do it again when we got like more yeah. significant changes because i also want to be up to date with this synthesizer yeah yeah of course yeah, we can. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, come and ask me. I'll uh, answer. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Okay, this was the video. If you want to reach out to Chrono, uh, if you have any questions or you want to buy that plugin, you find his contact in the description of that video. For now, I say thank you for tuning in and I see you next time. Bye bye.